I thought you liked my Maris. I do. I, I like her from a distance. You know, the way you like the sun. Maris is like the sun, except without the warmth. This aroma is triggering a, a sense memory. It's something familiar. Yet... Oh, of course. It's Maris in her home tanning bed. <laughs> Every time Aunt Patrice comes to visit, Maris makes all these plans, then she dives under the duvet with a two-week migraine, and I'm left holding the bag, literally and figuratively. <laughs> Maris and I rented the video. I don't mind telling you, we pushed our beds together that night. I bought it for Maris, but it unaccountably turned against her. It's one of Maris's favorites. My goodness, what did she do to it? Nothing. Just loved it. I'm sorry, I have to go. Maris is despondent. They've kicked her out of the cast of cats. Why? She couldn't remember the words to memory. You know, Maris and Daphne are roughly the same size. <laughs> Give or take a foot. <laughs> An actual deer grazing through the snow in our front yard. Of course, Maris fires off her shotgun from time to time to scare them away from our garbage, but still, it's enchanting. <laughs> Just put Maris on the train to Chicago, and you know how desolate I am without my Maris. Champagne? <laughs> Guess what your brother brought? Champagne. Oh, Maris left for Chicago already? <laughs> Why does she take the train instead of flying? She's been afraid to fly since her harrowing incident. Oh, dear. Did a plane almost crash? No, no. She was bumped from first class. <laughs> she still wakes up screaming. <laughs> the picture of you trying to make conversation with Dad's blue-collar cronies all evening is priceless. When I told Maris about it, it was all she could do to keep her eyes from dancing. <laughs> now, what do you think Mrs. Crane would like for dinner? Oh, oh, oh you have free reign. Just bear in mind, she can't have shellfish. Poultry, red meat, saturated fats, nitrates, wheat, starch, sulfites, MSG, or dairy. <laughs> Did I say nuts? Oh, I think that's implied. <laughs> then one afternoon, there was Maris, looking so helpless, banging on the electric gates with her little fists and a tire iron. Did locked her in? No, no, that was much later. <laughs> Maris. You really love her, don't you? You know, I do. That newly exfoliated little face staring up at you from across the breakfast table. <laughs> Aunt Maris is the soul of generosity. Just last week, she donated all her old cocktail dresses to a homeless shelter. What brings you by? Uh, Maris's birthday. I'm hiding her gift here. That's too bad. I just got back from the hardware store. It's a great-looking ratchet set. If there's anything left on her that needs tightening. At least I don't have to live with something unattractive. Oh, Niles, Niles, I'm just having some fun with you. Actually, I think Maris is rather attractive in a, a minimalist sort of way. I always throw out my back when I try to lift Maris's luggage. Why didn't you have a sky cap? Oh, we did for most of it, but Maris won't trust strangers with her makeup case ever since a ham-handed porter dropped it and broke three vials of rare Swiss lamb placenta. <laughs> Yesterday, I found Maris smack dab in the middle, sitting in the lotus position. Well, good for her, apparently. It's bringing out her spiritual side. I'm not so sure. She was reading a Danielle Steele novel, making a nail appointment on her cellular phone. <laughs> did I marry Maris for the money? I resent that. I did not marry Maris for the money. It's just a delightful bonus. Now, what's Maris doing wearing jodhpurs? She hasn't taken up horseback riding, has she? No, no, she wanted to, but unfortunately, her little quadriceps are so tight, she's incapable of straddling anything larger than a border collie. <laughs> Maris is hosting the Women's League Senior Yoga Group and, well, old money and body stockings. So, wait a minute. This Maris guy he kept mentioning is a woman? Well, uh, the jury's still out on that one. Have you talked this over with Maris? Well, not yet. I like to know what I want before Maris tells me. I guess I must have begun conducting with one of the gilded chopsticks Maris wears in her bun, and I accidentally ran him through. Maris and I will be over 40 then. Maybe it wouldn't hurt to look into getting some of her eggs frozen. Ooh, I suspect they're only a few degrees away from that now. You know, my wife Maris 
Actually has all our servants down at your campaign headquarters licking envelopes. <laughs> She'd do it herself, but the poor thing can't produce saliva. You know, when I was younger, I dreamed of being a ballerina myself. So did Maris. But the poor thing could never get her weight up enough. <laughs> oh, yes. Maris's facelift. Really? I didn't know she needed one. Well, she doesn't, actually. Nothing wrong with Maris. It wouldn't be cured by... A little sun, some exercise, and a personality. <laughs> Poor Maris, she's so worried she hasn't had much hospital experience. Except the usual childhood things, you know, tonsils, adenoids, force feeding. What's wrong with Mrs. Crane? Oh, it's nothing serious. Cosmetic surgery. Her chin, her lips, her cheeks, her <laughs> eyelids. Maybe it'd be faster if you just told us why she's leaving along. Maris's doctor feels it's more soothing for the patient to duplicate the home environment as closely as possible, so I slipped a pearl-handled revolver under her pillow and got myself a room across the hall. <laughs> Looks like you've bought out the entire gift shop. Maris should be pleased. Uh, this isn't for Maris. It's for her nurses. Uh, <laughs> they're having a meeting right now to discuss her care, and from what people tell me, a hospital strike can be ugly. Do you work on my wife's floor, Mrs. Maris Crane? Yes, I do. I'd like you to have these chocolates. I'm on the night shift. And this lovely watch. <laughs> Maris is unable to have pets. She... She distrusts anything that loves her unconditionally. Soon you'll be home with Maris, and you'll forget you were anywhere near a beautiful woman today. I'm supposed to ask Maris to spend an evening with a baseball player? <laughs> Why don't I just ask her to rub my shoulders? Maris was so distraught thinking I might have cold feet. Never forget how relieved she was to learn it was just a congenital heart murmur that would plague me for the rest of my life. Dad, I have never seen Maris this angry. I swear, her eye was twitching like a frog in a science experiment. I can't do that with Maris. She has abnormally rigid vertebrae. She'd snap like a twig. <laughs> Just get her a nice bottle of perfume. She gets hives. How about candy? Hypoglycemic. <laughs> Just get her a dozen roses. Allergic. <laughs> we all know she's a bit touchy about her age, even though it's not the first time she's turned 40. <laughs> Maris reminded me that an, an entire branch of her family tree was slaughtered by the Huguenots. <laughs> I'm going home to Maris. I thought she wasn't speaking to you. She's not, but she grows weary of being frosty to the help. Oh. <laughs> assume you and Maris achieved detente? Twice. <laughs> what magic words did you use to melt your little glacier? You bought her a Mercedes. Yes, all the things that tiny woman can do when she's properly motivated. <laughs> it was Maris. Uh, she stayed in the Mercedes, practicing her vivacious giggle. <laughs> I told Maris about your troubles. All she does is sulk and talk about bodyguards. Why don't we need one? Aren't we important enough to be stalked? <laughs> after you've seen Maris's interpretive dance group perform Afternoon of a Fawn in the East Garden, the wilderness holds no terror. Well, I mean, you know that Maris loves you, right? But it's still nice to hear it. I imagine it would be, but let's stick to attainable goals. <laughs> Maris is learning German, huh? Just when you thought she couldn't get any cuddlier. <laughs> The closest translation is not quite human woman. Hello, Maris. Thank God I got you. Listen, darling, there is no need to panic. The most important thing is to stay calm about the blackout. Maris, take off your slumber mask. Ooh. No, no, darling, don't panic. Honey, no, honey, th we're, honey, honey, honey. She's fine. It's time I braved the dark streets and got back to my Maris. I just hope this isn't like the lightning storm last month. The only way I could coax her out from under the bed was by tying a Prozac to the end of a string. 